question for both of you guys. How did you feel when you saw Reeves go down? Um, I mean, Dermy's a Dermy's a strong guy, so um, it's uh, two heavy boys fighting. But uh, yeah, it looked like Dermy maybe got the best of that one. I, I don't know. Yeah, we're all pumped. Yeah, a lot of lot of excitement. Uh, Dermy's an awesome guy, and he he loves violence. So he's uh, yeah, he's been looking for one. How many guys will fight him? So uh, it was fun to watch. Um, Nate, I know you know Justin from back home. What did you think of his debut in the beginning? Uh, no, I just told him to keep it simple, have fun like ever, everyone else. But uh, yeah, he's from Halifax. I skate with him in the summer. Um, great guy, works really hard and um, really nice, really nice kid. So uh, I thought he played great tonight. I'm not sure what his minutes were, but you know he kept it solid. I think he was a big part of that goal, uh, Val's first goal. And uh, it's great to have a, another good D-man on our team. COVID has been hanging over everything for two years, almost two years. The real world going on around you now yeah i mean obviously we still know covid's a thing but um at the end of the day uh, everybody on our team's vaccinated we've done the work to to make sure that we're at least safe if somebody does get it so um it's unfortunate that the taser went down but obviously you want to mitigate those as the season goes on Yeah, uh, same thing. Um, you know, obviously we we want to protect our loved ones, but we're healthy, we're fit, um, we're vaccinated. Uh, so, I mean, um, I know I heard a lot of guys on the, the the flames and none of them had symptoms, and so I, I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do um, moving forward. Hopefully, we can make these games up quick. Uh, you know, we're playing a thirty and fifty five right now, so I don't know where we'd make up games if we had to postpone anything. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully we can move this along. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously, uh, I shot that from the point that I was watching the replay, and it's uh, it's tough. Like I, I mean, Comp didn't. I didn't look like he was in the crease and stuff. I mean, if I'm a goalie looking at that now, I'm probably just sliding into guys and uh, making a little bit of contact. So. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of an interesting call, but um, at the end of the day, we, we got the win, so that's all that matters. You guys have always run a lot of offense from the point. Does it seem like you're getting pucks through at a much higher rate than you know, we've seen in the past? Have you seen anything different? Are you doing anything different? Or just pucks are going through for you right now? No, I think it just uh, attri it attributes to just our, our quick puck movement on the power play, um, like cross seam and then coming up. It, it just opens lanes, especially for me. And then um, tonight, even I missed a few opportunities to, to give it down to uh, – to one of the flanks and then uh, for the middle one T. So um, no, we're, we're snapping around pretty quick right now. And I think that just opens up options, not only for me, just for everybody, so. Hey, I know uh, Jared said that it's like, there's nothing that you can do when you're hurt to like pull you out of things like that. So when did you feel like you were kind of back in those like where you're after coming back from the uh, Probably 10 minutes into the game against Toronto. Uh, I was kind of like in, shocked the first 10 and then I got a feel for it and felt better. You just got to kind of uh, feel good about the little things, good little passes, uh, good shots on net, things like that. But there's nothing like it for sure. I, I had a really good rehab uh, skates with Sean, our skills coach. He was awesome. And um, but yeah, you definitely need in game uh, to feel good. How much fun is it to get back into the swing of things? You know, Hopper's doing something, seeing different people, different lineups, traveling, and now you're in yeah, it's nice to get a little bit of variance in playing um, different teams. Um, obviously, last season, we're playing the same team like two or four four times in a row. So um, you develop a pretty pretty familiar game plan, and it uh, comes, uh, becomes a lot more defensive games. But this, obviously, you're seeing a lot, a lot of new opponents. Everybody doesn't know each other very well. And um, games are, uh, I find, a little bit more open um, for the most part. Two, three more. There was, uh, your guys' last four games, there was a game with Detroit mixed in, but the other three games, the Rangers and the yeah, it feels good. Um, that's where we expect to be. I mean, we think we're we're a top team too, so 
No surprise there. Uh, you know, even with guys out, we're a deep team. Kemp's has been amazing. And um, from the back end up, I think, you know, we can play with anybody. So we expect to win. Jill, you're the first female in Moose history to score 13 goals within the first 23 games. It happened in 1988, 10 years before you were born. So what are all thoughts on this, on that kind of production? Yeah, I mean, I guess the the pucks just to, seem to be going in right now. Um, I don't, I don't anticipate this <laughs> continuing throughout the year. I think it's a a little bit heavy pace right now. But um, no, I mean, it seems cliche, but a lot of credit goes back to guys moving the puck well and then creating lanes for everybody, and um, especially even the goal uh, that I scored tonight, calm just in front of the net that doesn't go in if he's not there. So um, yeah. Jesse, then Peter. I noticed a couple days ago, uh, morning skate, you and Burakovsky were shooting. We stopped and you guys kind of, you know, talked about, you know, I don't know, whatever, but then he goes out that night, gets a hat trick, he had a couple of dangerous chances tonight. What did you say to him or what were you guys kind of talking about um, that, you know, when you guys were over there shooting? Um, yeah, just shooting off different feet, um, you know, in certain situations where to, where to shoot. Um, you know, he's got one of the best uh, shooting through traffic shots, that little toe drag when he shoots really close to his feet is amazing. He scores every year like that, probably 10 goals, so. Um, yeah, his third goal, not many guys in the league can score from that distance and, and from that uh, traffic. Um, but yeah, we, uh, you know, we'd like to shoot some pucks out there and he's got an amazing shot. So I definitely learned a lot from him too. Last one, Peter. Yeah, for either of you, what have you seen from Val this year that is maybe contributing to him scoring more than he has in the last few games? Yeah, he's, um, he's a tenacious player, obviously. Uh, he, he's big and then... Um, him being on the four check, he's been able to just retrieve so many pucks and then create opportunities for his line. And then um, I think his line's just doing a good job of, of feeding him as well. And then uh, even tonight creates that turnover and then uh, straight breakaway. So um, no, it's awesome to see. That was a, that was a pretty special player and uh, we're very lucky to have him. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. What have you thought of uh, Jesse and Jill's chemistry? I thought he was great. Yeah, great night from him. I thought he was, he didn't have a lot of work through the first 40 minutes, but uh, you know, he made the big saves when they counted, especially at the end of the game. How encouraging in general is just the last two games this season? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I'm feeling good about it. Like I said, uh, even this morning, I think our our goalies have some room to go here yet. You know, and um, we've seen a really good stretch from Camps before he got hurt, and uh, now we're seeing it again. Tony Bedrash gets this real world of No, I'm not, I'm not, uh, guys are living their lives. Um, they're being safe. They're following all the protocols is what it is. I'm not, I'm not getting into COVID stuff with our guys at all. Tell them to be safe, avoid crowds. They're basically, we're, we're playing every night. We're playing and we're going home to family, you know, you got to go get groceries, go get them. It is what it is. That's why I see it. Chris McDermott, obviously he's got the fight tonight uh, with everyone fired up, but what can you say about his play? He seems like he's really picked up his, just his level of play since he's been in the league. I think he's fantastic right now, really. Um, the security he brings to our team, um, he's confident player right now. He's been putting in a lot of work. He's doing the extra goalie work with UC shooting and doing skill stuff with uh, Sean, even after pregame skate. The other day, our whole team was off after pregame skate. He was out there for another 20 minutes on game day, just working on his own. And he looks quicker. He looks more confident with the puck. He's been firm with it. He's making nice plays. Um, he's getting the scoring chance at night, regardless of the position he's playing forwards in D and big part of our team right now. And he's playing well. Coach, why was the uh, goal whistle? No idea. <laughs> any, any other comments on it? Nope. <laughs> Given the uh, injuries you guys have, obviously McDermott was playing for a lot of the guys you have, but is there a conversation to be had just in the course of game knowing the guy at the other side playing the power or what that was or getting in the play? Is well, I think, it was, uh, yeah, I didn't even see how it started, to be honest with you. But, um, yeah, no, I, I, I haven't had any conversations with him about guys coming in he you know he he's a smart player he, he gets it and he's done his job without taking extra penalties in new york after the true hit um 
in against uh, Florida the other night after the Lomberg hit. He's having conversations and doing his thing, and you know he's been smart about it. And tonight again, no extra penalty. He wants to get into it with Reeves, and Reeves wants to get into it to hit with him. I'm all for it, you know. And um, he's playing physical, and he's he's not going to the penalty box. I think he's doing you know doing as good a job as he can possibly do. Thought it was okay. Yeah, thought it was okay. You can tell he's a little nervous early, but he settled in there. And um, yeah, he, he he did a nice job. Val's second goal, obviously, was a big, big goal. Yeah. They were pressing hard and got the one to give it some juice. Just overall thoughts about that particular play off the face off. Yeah, well, I mean, just another, you know, stepping up at the right time. And it's a, a timely goals from, from, you know, different guys every night. I think it's how you win hockey games. You make plays when the, when the game's on the line and uh, whether they're defensive plays or offensive plays. And tonight we get one from Val. The other night it was from Berkey. And I mean, it's, it's, it's what you need to be a top team in this league. So I, I like when I see it, what I'm seeing. And, and Val, obviously, great play there. Great move to, to, to you know, put the icing on the cake there. You talked about the German league. You played with their Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I guess, yeah. I mean, uh, there, those when you're missing Taves, um, Byram, two of your top four, uh, you're missing, you know, uh, Murray. You're you're missing McDonald. Um, that that's gonna be a blender back there, you know, like they every player on our decor played with every other player on their decor tonight and the, you know you get a d zone start you want a righty and a lefty you get an ozone start kidden's lines coming out you want to get a couple offensive guys out with them you know they put their top guys out you protect the young guys a little bit and you, you throw johnson and johnson on the back end for some heavy lifting in the d zone so they're rotating around in there uh, Prater's doing a great job of making sure we got the right guys on the ice at the right time. It's not easy to do. Like you're trying to match up your top guys against the Panarin and and uh, Strom line as well as the Zibanejad line. You still want to get them out in the ozone faceoffs as Mc if McKinnon's going next. Um, so it's not an easy job to do. But those guys did a nice job. They played against all four lines tonight, and um, we had a good night defensively. Regardless, regardless of the outcome of the challenge. Do you have any thoughts on how long they got before they had to make that decision? Yeah, they got two minutes. Feels like when that, when I'm thinking about challenging something, I can't even get to the second replay, and the refs are leaning over the board. You challenging, you challenging, and and they had two full minutes, and then no one's even saying anything. The refs didn't even go over their bench. It's too long. Now, good challenge. Four one, right? Like if it goes four one, the game's over. So they have nothing to lose at that point. There is a great challenge by by Gerard, and why why wouldn't you challenge it? You know, if there's any type of question to it at all, you might as well challenge it because otherwise the game's over. So they challenge it, and whether they thought it was or thought it would be called or not, um, then they and they get the they get the win on the challenge, and you know it changes the the final minutes of that game. Well, it's part of it. I think the most important thing is his habits and the way he's playing. I mean, he's been a tenacious player. He, like I, he, he has multiple plays in the first 20 minutes um, where he's got a heavy stick. There was one off an ozone face off where he jumps it and he gets a heavy stick and pickpockets a guy and then grabs the puck and sends it low to high in the offensive zone. And there we are playing in the offensive zone for 30 seconds, right? And he has another one in the D zone where he comes all the way back on it, arrives below the goal line and, and finishes a guy off and wins the battle and takes it and gets us moving the other direction. It, those things is, make a big difference in which end you're playing in. If they break it out off that ozone face off, we're playing in our end. And if, and if they win that battle below the goal line, they're playing in our end. Instead, we're going the other direction and he's playing on the right half of the rink. So that along with the confidence and the, and the heads up plays he's making, it's, um, 
you know, he's, he, again, he's making plays and under pressure and, and, and when other guys or, or himself are capitalizing on him. Coach, uh, to spend a little bit more on Cal, uh, he's having one of the best starts to a senior career. Yeah. Not only with points, but I mean, with the contribution in hits and blocks for him as well. Could you uh, tell us a little bit more about why you see his game as he's progressing and did you have a conversation with him before during the season? No, not really. Um, well, the big difference for Val this year from years past is whether that's it's his finish. I mean, it's his he's his work away from the puck and and checking pucks back and stealing pucks on the forecheck and his habits to his game are exceptional. Big, long, strong guy. Um, that's just when he has the puck, it's hard to get it from him and he takes it from everybody. And, um, I would say the one knock on him probably in years past was he's a little bit streaky of a scorer and you get a said, well, he didn't, just doesn't maybe have the best finish around the net. Well, that's changed this year and that's confidence and it's war, you know, he puts a lot of work into it too and he's getting rewarded keeps himself in top condition like all the things you want to see out of a pro he he has those habits every day so it's not surprising me he's having success i'm really glad to see it and i especially for guys that work that hard and want it as bad as he wants it and is such a good team guy an unselfish guy you want those guys to have success and um but it's yeah i mean i can't explain why this year he's scoring so much more than or at a, a higher clip than what he has in the past because to me he's not really doing anything different except finishing at the net and it, it's good to see yeah, thank you. follow up on cal he's been around for a while but like 26 years old he's a guy that like he's been around for a while but yeah yeah yeah, I think so. I think uh, there's a lot of things that go into that. I think it's confidence, his, his role on our team, the, the belief we have in him, the belief is more importantly probably that his teammates have in him that gives you confidence. I mean, I feel like he's carved out a, a real important role on our team. And and when you're feeling like you're needed and wanted and and you have a role and you and you're bought into the the group that you're with that you're going to you're going to play your best and he's happy here and um you know happy players are productive players and so it, again it's not surprising me that he's he's getting better every year now um especially when you take into his, his work ethic into it um but yeah I don't I don't know what is I mean He's playing really good hockey, right? I don't know what his ceiling is, you know? I mean, he's, I like to believe all of our guys can still improve. Last one for you. Yeah, um, Tom, for like, the goal against Council, like, how, how have you liked his game the last few months and since he's been back? Getting better every game. Okay. Yeah, slow start the first game, you know, as it, it's almost expected, right? And especially with the lack of practice time. Um, because getting those reps is important to get, you know, just get in that game shape and game feeling and getting used to operating under pressure. But he's got better all, all three games here now. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, thanks.